iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hey, everybody. Christine, good to see you. Hi, now, good to see you, Michael. There is the Tony Award-winning revival of Oklahoma, a big hit on Broadway now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, it's caused a lot of controversy because it's a kind of a rethinking of Oklahoma, an updating of Oklahoma for a more modern age. Right, uh, most, the staging and everything, Yeah, most right? of the critics loved it. Mm-hmm. And uh, audiences are fascinating because people who tend to be younger really, really love it. But older people who like their Oklahoma, kind of like the Shirley Jones way, Mm -hmm. are divided about this thing. So we're going to find out all about it it from two (laughs) of its stars. We welcome to the program Mary Testa, who plays Aunt Eller. Good morning to you, Mary. Good morning, Michael. And James James Davis, who's playing Will Parker in this Oklahoma. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having us. All right, so to see you guys. How do you find audiences reacting, Mary, to this show on a regular basis well you know um we have an autograph line after the show Mm -hmm. and uh a lot of people go on the autograph line and i'm finding that the majority of people who see this are very moved very Mm -hmm. shook um they don't my favorite thing to hear is i don't know what to feel right now as Mm -hmm. a lot of people say or they say oh my god i've got so much to think about Mm. that to me is a brilliant success if you if you go to the theater and you're moved and you're and you are questioning things, I think then it's a huge success. I'm happy to hear that. I'm sure there are people who think it's trash. As a matter of fact, I think Oscar Hammerstein's Hammerstein's grandson grandson just called it a travesty. Um, But There's a a word you put on the side of a bus. Yeah, I'm sure there are people who feel that way, and and that's great, because that's all what art is all about. People either respond or they don't. And And then you have Stephen Sondheim come and say, this is what Hammerstein had in mind. Exactly. So you have these differing opinions um, right in the moment. That's exactly right. Or um, Terrence McNally, who cried Mm. and said, this has restored my faith in the theater. Well, Well, I'd have to say Stephen Sondheim would know Oscar Hammerstein's mind better. Because uh, he studied under Oscar Hammerstein. Oscar was his uh, his mentor when mm-hmm. he was a kid and was learning how to write lyrics. Yeah, Shirley Jones, too. She had a similar reaction. She saw it, and we didn't know what she would think about it. And she was in our in a dressing room after the show, and she said, "This is the fr- I've, I've heard things for the first time yep. in this production. Her son said that to me, too. Yeah. And this what? is my understanding: is the book hasn't changed. No, at, we haven't changed anything at all, book. right? No. Yeah. So it's it's in the in the staging that is is really having this impact. It's in the focus of uh, mm-hmm. you know. I think even though I have not seen a production of Oklahoma, I think and what Ted Chapin had said to me was very often they just kind of rush to the s- production numbers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we really just take our time with the book, mm-hmm. and the, those themes are not. Theme, themes we put in there, they're in the script. Those dark themes are in the script. And we just take our time with them and sort of uh, f- kind of shine a light on them. Well, we don't want to give away too much because a lot of it is kind of a surprise coup de theatre sorts of mm-hmm. things that are unexpected. But it is definitely, I would say, um, not a peppy, happy, old-fashioned kind of musical, James. Yeah, and I think that people come in what they're maybe – people are – have expected that there's going to be a Broadway chorus and there's not. It's been um, distilled to, you know, eight central characters and um, I think we only have 12 on stage. Mm -hmm. So I think people are looking for a chorus and big dance numbers, but we don't have that. Mm -hmm. Um, You do have cornbread. We do have cornbread. And chili? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. We've been able to keep that in all three productions. You guys eat that food too? At intermission. <laughs> I've only had the cornbread. I don't eat the chili. Well, that could be a little dangerous in the middle of a show. You know, if Elaine, if Elaine, well. if Elaine Stritch were in your production, she'd take all the cornbread home in her handbag. Yes, she would. Home. Yes, she, she would. That's yep. what she used to do. And say, I don't know what happened to the cornbread. <laughs> There's no cornbread There's here. There's no sweet and low. What's what wrong happened? with you people? Exactly. Yeah. We just had, uh, you know, for, for people who aren't living in the New York City area, we had a power outage this uh, just recently. Did your show go dark or were you Yes, able- we were. It- we you were, did? Yeah, because yeah. we're on 50th Street. So it was basically 59th to 40-something. 40 40 yeah. 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 Did you guys Even perform out on the run. street, some of the shows? No. Did? No. <laughs> Mary <laughs> tests this like, I've been around the block too no, long. I, I was going home. Yeah. I was like, I'm was going home. Yeah, we all thought. We were going to move. So let's like crack open a beer and yeah. drink uh-huh. in the dark theater. And Mary's like, I got to get home. Yeah, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm using this opportunity <laughs> to spend a night in. So <laughs> you said people are, are lining up afterwards for autographs. Is this... A, Kind of just part of the whole being an actor and being in a Broadway show now because it it seems like it's almost expected at this point. Yeah, 
Now, there's always this. We don't really have a stage door proper, mm-hmm. but they have a, a place where people can line up. And I'd say every night we have at least 30 people there. Yeah, and there's more people as it gets warmer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you're tired after a performance or it's between shows, are you okay with still hanging out and meeting people? Uh, I think it's I, yeah. optional pretty much. Yeah. And I, it just depends. If I'm tired, I head out. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I see them out there lined up, I think... Uh, they, sometimes they stand out there for half an hour. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if it takes that long to get dressed, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. And also, if you're having a terrible performance, it's nice to go and have everyone tell you you're amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great it's a great ego boost, that yeah. autograph line. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a highly stylized production. And I'm curious to know, James, what your uh, what your director said to you guys about his ideas for this and the themes he wanted to bring out in the show. Well, I... I don't know if he really talks about themes so much as much as it's just in the action of the direction and the design. Mm -hmm. I mean, you learn so much by, um, you know, if you're not getting something, he'll stand up and he'll do your blocking for you and you'll be like, just like that. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, okay. (laughs) And it really, having him play every character sometimes Mm -hmm. really gives you a sense of what he's going after. Daniel Fish, your director. Daniel Fish, yeah. And you were with it since the beginning, right? Since... The uh, like as as you're working through all of this. Yeah. And, you know, I do have one story when I was doing um, the Kansas City number. I was smiling and kind of like laughing and talking throughout the whole thing. And he's like, why are you smiling so much? And I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. I think he's happy to be back. And he goes, no, Will Parker, he takes his fun very seriously. (laughs) <laughs> and that's sort of Daniel's approach is yeah. everything is very serious. You take your fun seriously. You take survival seriously. You take your love seriously. And so I think that's also why people are kind of taking away from the show that it's very um, intentional. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Have you, uh, have you modified Aunt Ella? I, I haven't modified her in any way because I don't know from any other production right um i'm just going by just trying to make sense of the lines and make uh truth uh, speak the truth be real Mm -hmm. and um you know i have an incredible backstory that i use every night um that you've completely made up right that in your mind to create the character sure what is that backstory well i mean i it's it's like if i wrote it all down it would be another script Mm -hmm. but really you know yeah i mean that's in this particular production, because we're all on stage all the time, you have to be an active participant. Mm-hmm. And so in order to be an active participant, you have to know what your feelings are for every character. And you've got to have a history with every character. And mm-hmm. and so, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, I've been with it from the beginning as well. And it's taken three different productions to sort of come up with a, a very big backstory. Mm. Um, which I live through every performance. Mm. So um, I think something else that's really common with Daniel's process, and I, this is the only show I've been in, I've done a couple of workshops with him, but he treats each script as if it's a newfound document. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there aren't a lot of references to past productions. He's mm. treating it like we just found it, and it's a new show, and we're putting it up for the first time. But it, mm. it, it is, as we were talking about a little earlier before we started the podcast, this is brand new. There's audiences where this is a brand new show, a brand new experience, and this is the first way that they're seeing Oklahoma. So, right. you, you know, you guys are, are setting the bar. Yeah, and I think the last revival was something like 15 years ago. So I guess we yeah. really are, uh, you know, there are some people who are seeing it who weren't even born during mm-hmm. the last revival. Mm. Yeah. And I I've, think people were so excited after the Tonys, too. Yeah. And and uh, I'd love to know what a kid who's seen this Oklahoma yeah. for the first time would think of the movie. They'd probably say, that yeah. thing is so oh. corny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so blissly old fashioned. Yeah. That's not yeah. the show that I sat through. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very funny. So, all right, before we let, let you guys go, mm-hmm. we always like to get from our guests a couple of uh, songs from Broadway shows that have a special meaning in your life, oh, that touch you in a certain way. Got a couple for us, James? Uh, well, mine are very current. <laughs> Mary's been giving me um, CDs to listen to, soundtracks to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so right now, um, Spring Within Me, is that the name of the song? There, uh, I feel so brain. much spring within me. So but that's an off-Broadway show. What's that yeah. from again? A uh, New Brain. A New Brain. A New Brain, right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Uh, Bill Finn, right? Yeah. 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 It's a, that's a good score. Yeah. And why do you like that one? Um, I, I feel like it has like a super catchy melody. It's it's stuck in my head. Um, and the show opens with a version of him singing that song. And then this character goes through a complete character transformation. And 
um, through uh, brain surgery and a hospital stay. And it, the show takes an entire arc. And then it's almost as if it's this like improved, more lived in version of the song that finishes the show. The same song bookends hmm. uh, the show. And I think it's done amazingly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Mary, you got one? You know, there's so many. But I, I think one of the songs that I'm very moved by is If I Loved You. Mm. Um, from I actually, um, I have an album and I actually ha have that on my album as a mashup with a Bjork song. Um, <laughs> but, um, I think it's a, I, I think I did not have a big catalog of Rodgers and Hammerstein, uh, because I, I just didn't do any of those musicals. And so I did a lot of concert work in the eighties and got to know a lot of Rodgers and Hammerstein and realized what an incredible, um, lyrics that every song has. And I think If I Loved You is like one of the more aching songs. And I love that kind of stuff. I love songs that ache, you yeah. know. And uh, so I'm going to pick that one today. Well, Oscar Hammerstein was a master of the sort of conditional love song. Mm. Never coming out and saying, I love you. It's if I love yeah. you, this would be that. But and you see, that speaks of uh, mm -hmm. great love. Right. You know what I mean? To well, me. So. And you've got one of those in Oklahoma. People will say we're in exactly. love. Don't hold my hand too much. <laughs> don't right. do this. Don't do that. Even though the audience sees the two people two people falling in love despite themselves. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I love, you know, I love heartbreaking. That's like my favorite. It's yeah. just my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Them both. <laughs> well, that's, what's the other one? Uh, is it a hammer? It's a Hammerstein. Spring is here. Spring is here, I hear. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, sort of somebody like, who. Kind of like, but that's not, it's, uh, spring will be a little late this year, but that's not us. That's not Rodgers and Hammerstein. Who is that? That's another gorgeous song. Do you know that one? No. Um, spring will be a little late this year. Spring will be a little late this year, a little late arriving in my lonely world over here. For you have left me. It's a, you know, I can oh, sing yeah. the whole thing. But it's be it's a beautiful, beautiful song about longing and heartbreak, you know. Yeah. Well, then spring is, <laughs> spring is here, I hear. They're talking about, you know, spring is a time for love, but there's no love in the singer's life. So the the last line is spring is here. I hear. Oh my God! See, that's heartbreaking, and I love that's it. lyric yes. writing. That's it. It's <laughs> way, way too relatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Don't yes. miss Oklahoma at uh, Circle. Are you at Circle in the Square? Yes. Yeah. We yeah are. I've got you at Circle in the Square, of course.